Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my Women's Online Bible Study. Today we're covering Luke chapter 13 verses 22 through 35. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in clarity and in its truth. Please help us to recall to put on the armor of God. Those things mentioned for us in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 13, starting in verse 22, throughout the remainder of the chapter. And I am reading from the New King James Version. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. On that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, come, oh, I'm sorry, Get out and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go, tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the, fo and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. And assuredly, I say to you, you shall not come, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word and let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. If you are here for just scripture read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it. I hope this means a blessing to you and I'll see you again next time. And if you're here for more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we will dive right in. Okay, so we are picking up here in the middle of Luke's uh, gospel in, in, in chapter 13, in the middle of the chapter. And uh, Jesus has just, uh, chapter three, uh, 13 covers his uh, he's teaching on repentance. He does a series of um, healings and he has started to speak to the people in parables. And then we are here reached, um, we, we're finally here at 22. So it says he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. So he's going throughout all these other villages, working his way back towards Jerusalem. Then in 23, someone says to him, Lord, are there few who are say, saved? So he wants to know, it's an interesting question, yeah. <laughs> um, are there a lot of people who are going to be saved or is just few, a few people who's going to be saved? And so this is Jesus' answer. Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow gate, the narrow gate. Now, the one that, the road that not many people are traveling down, not the wide gate where everyone seems to be going. And so um, it says, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able uh, when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door you uh, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you. Where are you from? So he's saying strive to enter through that narrow gate while there's still time, because uh, once it's too late, you can't go back. Like once you die, <laughs> you can't go back and, uh, and you know, and, and you don't want to wake up in hell um, for uh, living whatever sinful, you know, whatever 
sin that you might struggle with. Um, you want to add, repent, which means to turn away from that sin. And you want to add, if you're struggling with it, even in your repentance, you can, I, I repent from sins and I, it's not, I'm not delivered from it right away. It's something I have to work on. It's like, God, you have to continuously help me. And so that's why we pray daily. You, um, the, you can, with the Our Father prayer, um, we, we're seeking uh, forgiveness uh, daily. And we, but you do want to be trying to walk upright with the Lord. Um, uh, at least you be one of those ones who the Lord says, I don't know you, depart from me. You know, you, you are a worker of iniquity. You were content. You were fully content. You didn't ask me for help versus the Lord is compassionate on those who ask for help saying, Hey God, I know that I'm struggling with this sin. Cause let's, I, I, I hate sound like a broken record, but you get gratification in sin. If you didn't feel, if sin didn't feel good, no one would do it, and Satan, Satan would be out of business. But we do get gratification in those sins that we do, and so, but there's so much. It's so much better to walk with the Lord and and in His ways. He's just, I don't know. He's a good God. So I don't. I don't want to. I'm starting to ramble already. I just started back, guys. I'm starting to ramble already. Okay, let's go back to what the Lord is saying because because I'm going to want to draw the lesson out. <laughs> um, so uh, you don't want to be all the, the the one of those people who are um, who thought that they were going to get into the kingdom of heaven, but um, they 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 were deceiving themselves because they were walking in sin. And so picking back up, he says, then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So I just already um, spoke on that. And it says that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. So we'll be able to see and have the knowledge of the people of old from uh, the Bible. Uh, but uh, not we, because I'm going to be on the other side with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and uh, in the blessed kingdom of God. Um, but you don't want to be thrust out. So um, the Lord is just warning us, you know, saying don't continue us in that sinful life. If you need help, ask for help. Pray, God, I want to, I like it. I, I've done that. God, I enjoy, you know, whatever that sin might be. Can you please, <laughs> please, like it's a PA <laughs> instead of PL. Can you please help me uh, to um, stop doing this particular sin, whatever it, it, it might be. Okay, so um, picking up in 30. And no, 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 let's back up uh, to 29. They will come from the east and the west from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, uh, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. So um, uh, that Jesus always actually talks like that. So he's just saying that there, there people are coming from everywhere because he covered north, all directions. <laughs> um, and that the, uh, the last will be first and the first last. So people who might think that they are going to uh, receive a higher seat because... Um, we covered in you know, different gospels or probably covered in Luke as well. It's just been a minute since I did a uh, Bible study um, that um, the disciples were arguing over who were, who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is like, don't seek that a high seat. Uh, Cause the, I tell you the first will be last and the last will be first. And it's just him reiterating that here. Then moving on to 31 it says on that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, Get out and depart from him, for Herod wants to kill you. So um, these Pharisees are coming to warn him. Um, usually Jesus is not getting along with the Pharisees. Maybe they just wanted him to, to, you know, get away. But for whatever reason, they, they warn him. And uh, Jesus' response is, he's saying, go tell the fox. <laughs> Behold, I cast out demons and perform curses. So Jesus isn't moved by the them he uh them the Pharisees warning him to uh depart from that region that he's in. So he's like, No, you're gonna tell him um that I cast out demons, I perform cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I shall be perfected. So he's actually looking ahead to his death, burial, and resurrection on the third day. And then at 33, picking it up, it says, nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the following day. So the next three days, actually, uh, 
he's journeying for cannot to Jerusalem. Uh, it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. And then he picks up in 34 with this lament or crying out, uh, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones, those who sent to her. And he's reflecting back to the Old Testament because that is exactly what the people did when the prophet of woe uh, would come and, and, and um, say, you know, uh, we're going to be punished. We've been walking in sin and the people would kill them and stone them and because they don't want to hear it. no one wants to hear uh you're going to be punished for your wrong and so they would um stun it uh, stone those, those prophets and that's that's what uh, jesus is referring to here and he said he goes on to say how often i wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her uh brood under her wings so he said i, I wanted to gr draw you near to me you're my people i love you the lord is uh uh forgiving and loving god uh, but it says that they weren't willing. They didn't want that. They rejected the way of the Lord. Uh, because again, as I say, that people tend, we are in the flesh, our flesh yearns to sin. It's, it's, uh, it's such a horrible disease. People think that cancer or, um, just any debilitating disease is horrible, but sin is the worst one, guys. It gets us every time. <laughs> and then, um, See your house is left to you desolate, 35, picking up in 35. Uh, see your house is left to you desolate, and assuredly I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I, I just wanted to read an excerpt from my Bible uh, notes. I read from the um, Reformation Study Bible, New King James Version, um, and it's uh, on that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It says that crowds would greet Jesus with this blessing from Psalm 118, verse 26, at his triumphal entry in uh, 19 and 38. This four in Luke 19 and 38. But here Jesus is looking beyond his death and resurrection. Some interpret this as a promise of an end time conversion of the Jews. And then it gives a scripture reference of Romans uh chapter 11 verses 25 through 32 and then it says but the context may point more to the judgment of national of judgment of national israel and the extension of the promise to spiritual israel made up of the gentiles as well as jews which is in verses 27 through 39 and then it goes on to see it say see uh romans chapter 9 through 11 uh, for more information on that. So uh, uh, that would clarify what Jesus um, was saying when he says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord there. And it gives two different, uh, a couple of different interpretations of what some people may view that verse as meaning. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So that, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> 13. Uh, thank you for coming to read through and study scripture with me. I really appreciate it. I um, hope it's a means of blessing to you and I hope to see you again next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forever. Until next time.